James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? Like most people when I boot up a game for the first time, from the first logo, my mind is judging what I see and relating it to my own personal tastes. Seeing the Yuke's logo or the Atlas logo or the Sony Japan logo and so many others create this building great feeling inside of me that kind of prepares me for the rest of the game. While a good logo can feel great and in a lot of ways nostalgic, I think that topic is for another video and another day. Today I wanted to talk about something that comes right after the startup logo that can be equally as chilling and a catalyst for how I feel about the game for years to come. The pre-title screen intro. Today I want to talk about some of my favorites. Intros that are so clear in my mind, and intros that I remember, even when walking to the store or falling asleep without any visual or auditory aid. Not only do these intros mean a lot to me, but I think that they are incredibly put together and beautifully representative of the rest of the game. And I promise, no spoilers. So this is my personal favorite pre-title intro list, in no particular order. Part 1. It opens with the most horrifying sound from my childhood. A sound I can never get out of my head. Silent Hill 1 is one of the most terrifying games I've ever played. While horror, Graphics and combat has changed so much over the years in video games. For example, you see perfection in Resident Evil 2, that's an opinion. But Silent Hill 1 still sends dread through my body. The intro for the game is special, something that does not happen anymore but has similar aspects to other entries in this video. A music video styling with horror visuals showing off what you can expect from the rest of the game. They show moments from the game that you will get to see through some groundbreaking cutscenes that may be seen as spoilers, but the nature of this game means you will not understand what is going on until you actually play it. How everything is pieced together visually in front of the music is an art piece in itself that I never skipped once. The 2 minute runtime already fills me with emotions, but also shows you some answers without the questions that you will get through the rest of the game. The intro is almost worth the 6 euro that you can pay for it on PSN right now this second. It's scary, it sends chills down my spine, but in a lot of ways that's why I will never forget it. On the other side of the Silent Hill coin, we have my favorite Silent Hill game. In a similar way to Silent Hill 1, Silent Hill 3 is another music video style intro video, but this one makes me feel a little bit different. Cheating a little bit, I would say this intro makes me feel stuff after the fact, like for example pity for the main character Heather Mason who I fucking love. It's 2003, so the song is more early 2000s rock that has kind of been left over from the generation beforehand that was drowned in grunge. It definitely is trying less to straight up horrify us and instead show us visuals that are tormenting our main character, a teenage girl who has gotten herself into something she could never be prepared for. I love this video and I love this song and I love Heather Mason like I said before. For a good video on why Heather Mason is so awesome, check out Dradex's uh, Heather in Wonderland. It's fantastic. There is more of a focus on character in this one, and a center on how Heather is reacting to the world around her, which again sets up the rest of the game perfectly.
Am I cheating again? Possibly. The intro to Twilight Princess could be more seen as a title screen and yet... It is. I know. It is. But I think it's so well done and put together that I had to mention it. From the second you boot up Twilight Princess and hear the operatic chant singing the theme to the game, the ya yeah we hear from Link on the horse, the landscapes we see and the galloping of the horse over those landscapes, and even the dramatic ending to this title screen intro, I really fucking love all of this. All of this. While it does not really set up what is coming for the rest of the game, it does show us one of the few instances that Link will be alone. For the rest of the game, Link is joined by the greatest companion ever, Minna, for the whole game. It's a stark difference from the whole entire experience of Twilight Princess, and that's what makes this intro special to me. In terms of my own perspective, this intro gives me a moment to breathe, to prepare for a boss I'm about to fight, for a dungeon I'm about to explore, or even a story beat I'm about to cry for. This intro, like many others on this list, and like all others on this list, should not be skipped. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. I can hear this intro as I sleep. Let me tell you a story about an intro that tries to tell us a story. A game that I think is actually perfect. A game where I can find no flaws and the intro is no different. Like we are a cozy child listening to our mother, we are being read the history of an item that will become very important to us as the game will go on. The Star Rod. The music is soft and feels tingly in its nature. With visuals that look like a pop-up storybook that takes an evil turn, it is perfectly reflective of the game we are about to play through and tells us why the story is no ordinary Mario story and the world we are witnessing is one of the most fleshed out stories in not only Mario in general, but Nintendo as a whole. While some might not find this opening to be very visually pleasing, and that is to be expected with an N64 game, my nostalgia goggles have nothing to do with this. I played this game for the first time last year and it is truly stupendous. It's all done in good fun like most Mario games, but there's an element that rewards people for not skipping. If you watch this, you understand the lore better, and you understand why you are doing what you are doing, and that makes this intro almost essential to watch, along with all of its beautiful visuals. Resident Evil Remake Who hasn't wanted to say that, like, every time you play a Resident Evil game? Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Horror games have a much harder time getting across tone than other games do. Use the wrong lighting or the wrong music and everything will fall apart around it, no matter how good the rest of the game is. The intro to Resident Evil Remake is perfect at not only setting a tone, but can also be visually interesting, even when separated from the game entirely. Originally a full motion video, later opting for 3D animations, the intro to Resident Evil is like the rest of the game. It's iconic, how it creeps along, not showing us everything at first and then slapping us in the face with disgustingly beautiful and horrifically gorgeous scenes. We see our heroes, what they are capable of, and in one case, we see just how calm and collected one of our heroes is. We know it's an outbreak, that is true but we also know it's one we're not prepared for, and so the player should not be prepared to mow down enemies in this game. This is gonna take a while, and it's gonna be gritty and horrible, and oh my god, it is. This is also a lot of people's first time seeing Jill fucking Valentine, and I guess the other people in the intro are important too, I guess, I don't know, I guess. This intro is scary, it feels claustrophobic, and it's another one that I never skip, even when it seems too long. Because tension rises throughout, and it makes pressing new game all the sweeter. <sighs> this is our story now.
To end part one of this video series, why not talk about one of the most iconic of all video game intros? Memed to death by Vine stars over the years, the song Prelude has survived that and still manages to evoke emotions out of me. Under the song, we see our future party members' weapons stuck in the dirt as the party rests in a circle, not conversing or even looking at each other, but comforting each other just with their presence. Tita stands up and places his hand on Yuna's shoulder. She acknowledges him and he moves on to the highest point of the small island they are sitting on and words that I will hear on my deathbed are spoken. Listen to my story. It's hard not to get emotional when thinking about this. This game was my introduction to the idea of a love story, which I still carry to this day as my favorite type of story. This intro is not made to get across every emotion you will feel in the game, but it does show the connection between Titus and Yuna. Our party is sitting together after being through so much, although we would not know this yet. So talking about it on its own, the intrigue level for me when I first played this was through the roof. I instantly felt connected to Yuna and wanted to know the names of everyone that I sat with in this circle. I've never seen anything like this in a game before, and very few games come close to the emotion that they get across in this, even now. And that's fine, because this intro has kept me full for years. Listen to my story. This may be our last chance. We fade to black, with the silver title on screen. Final Fantasy. 10. So guys, this is my first uh, video of my favorite video game intros. I really enjoyed kind of reliving a lot of these, but I just wanted to make the first one kind of short so I can actually know, once I upload this, what this series will truly be. I uh, expect more Zelda, expect Persona, uh, expect Tekken, expect Pokemon, and let me know some of your favorite video game intros and what you think of my picks. Thanks.